In this lesson, we'll be exploring the angle addition postulate and the segment addition postulate. But first, let's start by reviewing how we measure angles. This is angle ABC. It looks like a right angle. We suspect it has a measure of 90 degrees. But to lay a protractor on the angle, we want to make sure that the center of the protractor is right at the vertex of the angle, that the zero degree mark on the protractor is on one of the two rays, and the other ray you can see indeed goes through 90 degrees. So ABC is a right angle. It measures 90 degrees. Angle DEF is an obtuse angle. We have our protractor lined up. There's the zero degree mark. There's the other ray. We're going to pick the larger angle. We're not going to go with 60 degrees. We'll go with 120 degrees because it's an obtuse angle. Now we have an acute angle, GHI, where the bottom ray there is at zero degrees, ray HI, and then ray HG passes through a mark on the protractor that's between 60 and 70 degrees. Right in the middle would be 65 degrees. So we're just reviewing how we measure angles. We're remembering that this one here is an obtuse angle, so it would be bigger than 90 degrees but less than 180. My zero degree mark this time is at the left hand end, and ray QR passes through 150 degrees. The measure of angle PQR is 150 degrees. Now let's talk about the angle addition postulate. This is one of the two big ideas of this lesson. It says if point D is in the interior of angle ABC, then the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC is equal to the measure of angle ABC. In other words, part plus part equals whole. So this is when we have two angles that are adjacent. And you'll notice on this slide there's four problems all having numerical values. Top left problem says find the measure of angle KLM. So let's look at KLM. It's the larger angle. And we're given information about the two smaller angles that are adjacent. Angle KLB measures 26 degrees and the measure of angle BLM is 60 degrees. So we're going to apply the angle addition postulate. The measure of angle KLB plus the measure of angle BLM is equal to the measure of angle KLM. We're going to add 26 plus 60 to get 86 degrees. Let's look at the bottom right problem. We're asked to find the measure of angle WDC. And we're told some information about the diagram, that the measure of angle EDC is 145 degrees, and the measure of angle EDW is 61. So basically, when we apply part plus part equals whole, it's 61 plus something equals 145. So we can write this equation. We can solve for x by subtracting 61 degrees from both sides. Grab a calculator, and you get that x or the measure of angle WDC is 84 degrees. Please solve the remaining two problems that are on this slide. Pause the video and apply these principles. Now we'll go on to this problem which has to do with algebra. So we're combining algebra and geometry here we can see that we have two angles that are adjacent. They share that common ray GE. We're given information about the two smaller angles and the overall angle. And we can apply the angle addition postulate, that the measure of angle HGE plus the measure of angle EGF is equal to the measure of angle HGF. We're going to substitute in the values that we're given. 3x plus 11 plus 110 is equal to 16x plus 4. And this is where you bring in your algebra knowledge from prior years. We are going to combine like terms on the left-hand side of that equation. Let's add 11 plus 110. Now let's subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. And we get 121 is equal to 13x plus 4. 
We're going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, leaving us with 117 is equal to 13x. Now to solve for x, let's divide both sides of the equation by 13. And with a calculator, we get that x is equal to 9. Always look back. What was the problem asking you for? It said find x. So the answer here is x equals 9. Sometimes the question will ask you for something else, like find the measure of angle at HGF. You have to be aware of the direction. We're going to move on to the segment addition postulate, closely related to what we were just doing. But this time, instead of two angles that are adjacent, we have two pieces of a line segment, which when we add them together equals the length of the whole segment. And notice the points A, B, and C are collinear. So point B is between A and C. And we get that AB plus BC is equal to AC. Once again, part plus part equals whole. Let's start with some numerical examples. The example on the top left, we see segment AC, which is, and point B there is in between points A and C. Some length AB plus 5 is equal to the overall length of 13. So this is just mental math. What number plus 5 is equal to 13? That would be 8. And then let's look at the example on the top right. What number plus 9 is equal to 20? You could also think of it as a subtraction problem. The, the unknown length is just going to be 20 minus 9 to give us 11. Please solve the two problems at the bottom of this slide and then move on to the next slide. On the next slide, we have some algebraic expressions. We have QR plus RS is equal to QS. And we'll plug those expressions in. X plus 8 plus X plus 15 is equal to 15. Let's see if you can solve that equation on your own and get a value for X, and then we'll compare. So first, you should combine like terms. Now we're going to subtract 23 from both sides of the equation. Let's combine the like terms on the right. 2x is equal to negative 8, so x equals negative 4. That's the value of x. Now let's look at our diagram. QR. Now it's OK that x is negative. While lengths can't be negative, QR involves x plus 8. So when I take negative 4 plus 8, I get a positive value of 4. RS is going to be negative 4 plus 15, or 11. And then when I look at my diagram, it makes sense that 4 plus 11 is equal to 15. So always go back and check that your answer makes sense. For the bottom example, we have x plus 11, so that part fg plus the other part gh is equal to 7x minus 1. Once again, pause the video, solve this equation, and answer those lengths on the bottom. Then come on back and we'll check. All right, first thing we want to do, let's subtract 7x from both sides of the equation and subtract 11 from both sides. Combining like terms, we get negative 6x is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 6, and you get x equals 2. Now fg is represented by x, so fg has a value of 2. fh, then, can be easily found by 2 plus 11, that's one way of getting that value, or 7 times 2 minus 1 fh is equal to 13. So that's a little bit about the segment addition postulate. Now we have two examples for you to try. We will get you started on these, but please solve both problems on your own and show your work on your Google slide. So we have an angle addition postulate on the left and segment addition postulate on the right. 
We always start by looking at the two parts, add them together to set it equal to the whole. Remembering that for a straight angle, it measures 180 degrees. So we're going to add the two expressions for the angles and set it equal to 180. Now your job is to solve that equation for x, but then realize it's asking you for the measure of angle DBC, so make sure you substitute x into the correct expression. All right, and then we'll look at NM on the right-hand side. To solve for NM, it has an expression x minus 6, which means we need to know what x equals. So part plus part plus part this time equals whole. Simplify the left-hand side of that equation and solve for x, and then find the value of NM. Now, once you've completed those two problems, we want you to summarize what you want to remember about today's lesson. Please write something about the angle addition postulate and the segment addition postulate.